good morning. I think it's April 6th. <laughs> I'm not really sure. 7th? 6th. Today is April 6th. Um... So not too long ago, a yoga friend, colleague of mine, Ralph Gates, was talking about learning how to orienteer when he was starting out in the army. And he talked about a few pitfalls that are common when uh, engaging in this kind of activity, orienteering with the compass and coordinates uh, and a map. Now we have GPSs, so it's the skills aren't as well honed or as necessary. But a couple of the pitfalls he mentioned are um, getting a little anxious about the process and changing the size of your paces, your steps, which can screw you up, um, or starting off uh, a few degrees off the mark, maybe even a half a degree off the mark in the beginning, which leads to a much bigger discrepancy in where you're going. And he sort of summarized the whole process up with the following statement that I actually said in a class the other day. Uh, we talked about in the process, you'll notice how this cluster of trees is different from that cluster of trees and how this hill is slightly different than that hill as you learn the landscape. And he said, if you fall in love with the details, you'll never get lost. And that strikes me most days of my life lately. So the details of in my asana practice, um, the relationship between all 26 bones in my feet or the detail of where I feel breath moving or not moving, or the detail of where the weight is exactly on my foundation, whether it's a hand or a foot or a outer hip, whatever's on the ground. If I can attend to the details of all of the particles of emotion and feeling that get stirred up in any given moment with any given response or any given change in my immediate context, like if I can fall in love with these details, I may never uh, lose my temper. I may never um, act in a way that I regret. If I fall in love with the details of all of my experiencing in theory, I can position myself, my inner asana, my outer asana, right where I hope to be for the best outcome for the most number of people involved. And so that's what I'm working with today. We're going to start standing, which is rare for me. So I'm not using a mat today. You sure can if you've got a nice flat surface and sort of sticky tacky feet like I do. They're not dry ever almost. Then I don't need a mat. Mat limits me. So use one if you want one couple of blocks, probably a belt, and by the end, likely a bolster, maybe even a folding chair or a kitchen chair or some kind of chair. I have a yoga chair. If you have a yoga chair, grab it. Um, an ottoman could work. Um, so rally up your gear, and if you um, need to change your position in the room or in the house, wherever you're at, fine. And then one last thing is um, I'm now uploading all these videos to YouTube, which is also another weird thing in my life. Uh, but yep, they're up there for all to see. And um, so with this format, Facebook doesn't work for you. You have another option. <clears throat> so come to find your standing position. Bring your legs right under you. And don't do anything yogic. Just come to stand. In fact, uh, borrowing from one of my teachers, Amy Matthews, um, take a few steps forward and then take a few steps back. <clears throat> and then a few steps forward. 
and a few steps back. And like you're walking forward to step up in line, pause with your feet under you and don't do anything else. Just stand, stand right where you are. The urge to adjust and change the position in which you landed will likely arise. See if you can see that urge for what it is and not respond to it. So short story is don't change anything yet. You could look down and see where you landed. No surprise to me that my right foot's a little bit in front of my left foot. <clears throat> Usually when we stand, not on purpose for yoga and do all this overlaying of actions to reorganize our parts, not bad or wrong. When we don't do that and we just stop and stand, usually we're up to something else. We're talking to someone or waiting our turn. There's all sorts of things around us to distract us, perhaps. The magazine rack at the checkout counter, brochures, whatever. And typically we're not registered inward. And we'll usually discharge unconsciously any discomfort that comes up. We'll shift our weight to one hip. We'll change our footing. We'll step forward or back. We'll sway. But resist all of that now and See what you feel, what information is coming up by not doing any of that. If you have ankle pain, like I'm starting to feel a little fatigue on my outer right ankle, just because I'm paying attention, it probably wouldn't be noticed otherwise. And I can feel it sort of veering up into my inner right knee a little. Eventually it'll make its way up to my hip and spine. You might have something presenting in the feet or the ankles or the knees or the hips or the spine or the neck, which is part of your spine. The longer we stay and not address or adjust, likely the louder that feedback will get. So simply consider this a standing meditation. Without moving your feet, without changing the way your feet are on the floor, you have options like I'm gonna put more weight in my heels just now. Just simply tipped my weight back to stand over my feet. I was a little bit in front of myself. I was a little bit in my toes. Check that out. And so whatever urge has arisen, to adjust, fix, correct. Before you make any movement, please drop in and feel exactly it is, what it is you want to do, what exactly it is you want to do to address any dissonance, discomfort you're feeling. Don't do it yet. Plan on what you're going to do, then do it, and then see if it addressed what you were trying to address. So when you're ready, So having reorganized, maybe a little, maybe a lot, how you were standing, did what you hope would result from that, did you find success there? Feel into the three corners of the feet, outer heel, back of outer heel, the heel, but primarily back outer edge of the heel. Pinky toe, ball mound, big toe, ball mound. Try to get even weight on those three corners and those two feet, so six points. And from here, little ankle, knee, hip flexion. So soften the knees, but keep the feet even on the floor, and then re-straighten. And then bend again and re-straighten. I call this the merry-go-round asana. It's just like a merry-go-round course, straight down, and straight up. Don't lean forward. Don't lean backward. You can extend this movement by going tiptoe and then heels down, ankles, knees, hips bend, and then straighten into tiptoe. I'm going to add arms, inhale up into the tiptoe, 
and then exhale down. Add a little spinal flexion here, rolling down with the merry-go-round legs and then rolling up, sweep arms up, tip toe. And continue with this simple movement. You can make it bigger or smaller. We started smaller. See if you can sink everything up. So the peak of the tiptoe, the arms are up, and the depth of the knee bend, the hands touch the floor. And everything sinks up. The full straightening maximizes with the tiptoe, arms up. And the full flexion of the spine and knees and ankles all come together as you roll down. This time, stay up, stay up. And can you reach more through the right side? Stand more on the right foot, right tiptoes, lengthen right side. Maybe pick left foot up off the floor, maybe, maybe. And stand right leg, tiptoe leg. And then put left tiptoes on floor, come back to both tiptoes, both arms up, and then reach more left side. So long left side, left side can hold its own while right foot comes off the floor. Back to both tiptoes, arms down, soften both knees, ankles, torso stays up, shift weight to the right. Keep left foot down, but no weight bearing. Rise tiptoe right foot, so left foot could come off. Both tiptoes over to the left, maybe right foot comes off. Lower down, stay to the left. Both knees, ankles, hips bent, sweep right. So you're making a circle shape through this vertical plane. Right tiptoes, left tiptoes. Lower down on left, both knees bend. Now I'm trying to keep the non-working leg off the floor. So I rise up on the right, switch to the left on tiptoes, stay on left, go from left tiptoes to left heel down to left knee bent to both knees bent, both feet on the floor to right. We'll do one more time circling to the right. So this is core work if you can parse it out. If you can get into the details of super steady balance, pause, both knees bent, both feet down, switch directions. I'm going to do the first circle with right toes sort of guiding, supporting. Maybe they come up over to the right, maybe left toes come up, but on this first round you can keep them down. Two more. One more. Concentrate. And this time when left foot goes down, forward bend. Uttanasana, I'm stepping back. <clears throat> if you need your blocks here to support the upper body, grab them and take your time with one knee bent, one leg straight. Other knee bent, other leg straight. And eventually both legs straight. And I'm gonna to turn to the side. So if you need to see, you can. With both legs straight, bend your knees a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. So hips almost as low as the knees. Cat pose your spine, so really curl in. 
Feel how the curling in drops the tail and the sit bones. And then roll the torso up, keep your hips low. Take your arms up, Utkatasana. And simply pause with the intensity. Weight can be more in the heels if it's possible to feel the work in the belly more. If the weight's more in the toes, the effort's gonna go into the back muscles. If weight's more in the heels, effort goes more into the belly muscles. Thighs work no matter what. Where do you wanna put the work on the torso? Ha, come on up. From here, hands on hips and step your left foot back not very far. Maybe like a normal step length, right? 10 toes straight ahead. So I'm gonna stand in front now, or face front. 10 toes straight ahead, which is actually harder than you would think. So look, 10 toes straight ahead. Look at your back foot. All right, so back leg is left leg. Put left palm at left hip point. In front. Back of right hand at the SI joint in the back. <clears throat> and stand clearly on your left heel. Punch it back and down, so much so, perhaps you get a clear feeling of the left thigh bone going backwards. And the left hip point in the palm of your left hand tipping forwards. <clears throat> Inchworm your right foot more forward, straight ahead, all 10 toes straight ahead. So much more distance between your two feet now, maybe almost inviting left heel off the floor. Don't let it come off the floor yet. Hip point falling forward into left hand. Right SI joint sort of falling back into the right hand or the right pelvic half falling backwards and the left thigh is like Bunsen burner, flaming hot, strong left thigh. So at this point, maximize how much distance between your two feet without the left heel coming off the floor. Keep turning left hip point forward and down. Keep making left thigh crazy strong. And at, that, at the point where the left heel wants to come off the floor, put your hands on your hips. Keep that left hip pointing forward. You could look back at your left foot and kick that left heel towards the midline. So now the left leg itself is turned out, but the hip is not, in theory. <laughs> Maybe you can get a little more distance between your feet before left heel comes off the floor. Arms straight down, press the palms back, bend your right knee. Virabhadrasana one. Left hip keeps pointing forward. Interlace your hands behind you, if you can. Soft elbows. Cat pose your spine, curl down, round down. Now don't let the right hip swing to the right. That's super easy. Keep the right hip scooped under, right sit bone towards your own right heel. You gotta make room for the torso to come on down. Squeeze the arms together behind you and reach them towards the clouds above you. And then keep your hips low, come rolling on up. Sweep the arms forward and up. And sit down in that right sit bone. Keep turning that lift towards the right heel. You have two choices from here. You can step your left foot straight forward to your right, stand, or turn to the left. Go wide-legged and then bring your legs right together. Pause standing and notice the difference between the two sides. My right leg feels thicker, longer, heavier, further rooted than my left. So with hands on hips, look down and step your right leg straight back, not a huge stance. Start simple. 10 toes straight ahead, 10 toes straight ahead. So look at your right toes. Mine were not straight ahead. 
which is not news to me. My right foot's pretty frisky. Hand palm of the right on the right hip point, pointing, pouring, tipping forward. Left hand on your left SI joint or the back of your left pelvic half. Let that fall backwards. The two pelvic halves go with the feet. I've said this in many classes before. And then the head and the tail try to keep their sort of pole star position here. Right thigh bone pushes back into the space behind you for infinity. And then inchworm your left foot more forward till you get to the point where the right heel wants to come off the ground. Don't let it. Don't let it. Keep turning right hip more forward. Keep letting left hip fall back. Keep right leg strong and stable. So once we've maximized the distance with 10 toes straight ahead between the two feet, hands on pelvic calves, keep them stable, and then turn the right heel in a little towards the left without turning the hips open. And if there's any more length to eke out between your two feet, go for it. Arms, palms down beside you. Press the hands back as you bend the left knee. Virabhadrasana one. Interlace the two hands behind. And as you go down, scoop your left sit bone under towards your forehead. Don't let your left hip, don't let your hip swing to the left. Dive straight down, top of head towards left heel. Left sit bone towards left heel. <clears throat> Keep pushing the floor down with your feet. Keep lifting the navel up. One or two more breaths here. And as you sweep the torso up, sweep the arms forward and up. <clears throat> Keep turning right hip towards left. Keep sitting into your left heel and sit bone. And you choose. Either step right foot forward and stand up, or turn to the right. Then bring your two legs right together. Up we come. Catch your two blocks. Stack them on their flat sides. <coughs> if you're on carpet or squishy surface, I'd probably just use one block. Get your heel, right heel on the block. Depending on how long your feet are, your toes will probably hang off a little bit. Stand up on your right leg. <clears throat> Hands on hips can help sense the levelness of your hips, but give yourself a few moments to like let the left hip drip down and then hike it up. So you're doing, um, a little up slip, down slip of the two pelvic halves by way of the right legs, so working on inner thigh muscles, the rotator muscles around the head of the femur with this up and down, up and down. Take your time with arms up to bend the right knee as if you're gonna step off the block but just suspend that moment. Suspend the movement to take a really slow step down. Mountain pose of no particular sort. Pause, rest, feel. Or squeeze the legs and shoot the heels down like there's two kinds of mountains in the world. You've got the Himalayas. I'm stepping up on my left foot. You've got the Himalayas that are still growing, rising up into the sky. That's why there's so many earthquakes over there. Up, slip, down, hip, left pelvic half. You've got the Rockies here in the United States that are sinking into the ground. So you can be whatever kind of mountain you want to be. It doesn't have to be the same damn mountain every damn day. Up and down, up and down. And then when we take our step down, slowly bend left knee, 
like you're stepping to touch right foot. And I can feel my right toes touch the floor, but I'm not bearing any weight. In fact, I'm gonna bend the right knee to make a little bit more challenge than as I step down mountain of choice. Right foot again. This time, hold the pelvic halves level. Rotating externally. So can you find outer edge of right foot and turn the body to the left without the right knee twisting or turning. And then internal rotation. So right leg, you get a little bit more heavy on the ball mount, like a pronated foot and wrap it around, turn towards the right. And then right leg externally rotates, sending torso to face left, left leg's dangling, dangling as it were. Right leg internally rotates, swinging body to face the right. I really feel my big toe mound heavy. And then one more time, external rotation, outer foot heavy. And then last time, internal rotation, inner foot heavy, back to neutral, slow, sustained step down, and both feet on the floor. Don't do anything that hurts your knees. If something makes your knee pinch or grab, find a way around it or through it, not a painful way, but a pain-free way which means you're, the details, right? So standing on left leg, everybody's bones are different, externally rotate, everybody's lives are different. What's medicine for me may not, likely not, certainly not medicine for everyone. Internally rotate may or may not be medicine for you. External, ooh, feel that whole outer leg turn on, firm up. And then as you internally rotate, invite the whole inner leg to turn on and firm up. One more time, turn open, outer foot heavier, lift the knee and quad. One more time, turn in, inner leg heavier, lift the arch and inner knee, whoa, and take your long sustained slow-mo Step down, back on your two feet. Separate hop, feet wide apart, 10 toes straight ahead, fold on down, hands to floor, maybe elbows to floor. You could catch your ankles if you wanted. Work some bent knee action here, some straight leg action here. It can be symmetrical, meaning both knees bend and straighten together, or one knee at a time bends and straightens. The bending, make the bending a heavying of the outer foot, a lifting of the inner ankle, a lifting of the inner arch. And from here, with soft knees, come rolling on up. Ten toes are still straight ahead. And let's kick the left heel to the left. Keep the left knee bent. And pick up the right toes and swing the whole right leg into external rotation. Keep both knees bent. I'm going to interlace hands behind me. And I'm playing here. I'm getting a little bit wider in my stance. Right leg pushes more weight to left but not a straight right leg, a little bend. And then left leg pushes weight into the right. I'm not gonna straighten left leg all the way. So left and right, flirting with the straightening of each leg. And can you envision or imagine or pretend that the pelvis is sliding left to right on the same plane? Same plane, so it's a low pelvis, low pelvis. Let's turn this into Vera 2, so the back leg will straighten. You're sitting low in that right hip. Take both arms up if you choose and actually catch opposite elbows and lift your elbows to the sky. Sink the hips towards the floor, but no lower than the right knee. 
Another breath here. We're going to swing the right arm under and over to the left hip and the left arm along the side of the head. So no support with the right arm unless you choose it. If you choose it, just grab your ankle. Otherwise, hold your hip and turn your heart towards the sky. Another breath or two. Warrior two as you come up, Virabhadrasana two, arms wide. And then come a little bit out of that bent right knee to bend your left and turn your toes, turn your legs. Right leg turns in a little, left leg turns out a lot. Both knees soft. Slide, pelvis, same level, left to right. So there's this moment where it's like you feel each leg weight bearing as if you're going to push off that weight bearing leg into some other gesture, some other movement. But let's pull ourselves into Vera 2. So right leg goes straight. Left leg quite bent. And if you're tapping into the details of heel bone sit bones, I've tried a few classes on it now up to this point. Left sit bone following heel is either intentional and or clear. Right sit bone following right heel, either intentional and or clear. Catch opposite elbows overhead. Reach up, pull your elbows up by your hands. Pull the ribs up by the reach of the elbows. Big breath in, sitting down more, and then left arm sweeps under and to the right, and the right arm sweeps over and to the left. Keep riding out our left foot without losing the big toe. And keep riding in our right big toe without losing the outer foot. Vera two. Little right leg bend, little left leg straightening, all 10 toes straight ahead. And then you decide, step or hop, feet right together. Arms up, squeeze legs, tiptoe pose. Tiptoes, and then lift the knees. Bend and lift the knees. So it's chair pose on tiptoes. Old school Bikram style, although he put the arms in front, which I have no style, I, I actually do have preference, straight up. And then slowly lower your heels and straighten your legs and find the mountain pose of your choice. So I'm doing not much weight bearing in the arms. Springtime is here rooting, working on rooting and trying to keep the energy down. You can do more arms, hands down stuff if you like, step or hop your feet. Nope, don't do that yet. Keep your legs right together. <clears throat> you can do hands on hips. They may need to go wherever you need them to go. But as if you're, you stepped in something with your right foot and you want to look at it. So try to see the sole of your right foot. And notice what that leg does. It's like a pigeon leg of sorts. We did this in class not too long ago. Put the foot down. Left side. Can you scoop up outer foot, trying to sort of be the highest? <clears throat> and if your big toe, if your left big toe is all twangy into the space in front of you, can you uh, try to see the toe print of your left big toe? Back to the right side. So can you see all five toe prints? That means you have to shine the toe prints towards your face. Now I'm bending left knee. Go back to the second side. Try to see all left toe prints and bend right knee. Go back to the first side. All right toe prints, bend left knee. Could you casually place that right ankle on your left knee like figure four? And sit down. And keep trying to look at your right toe prints and maybe take your arms up. Drop that right hip, lengthen right waist. Let right knee maybe be lower than left knee. Maybe stand up. 
Look at the sole of your left foot, all five left toe prints trying to be visible. Bend right knee, maybe place left ankle on right knee. Whatever you wanna do with your arms. But keep trying to shine left foot to face. Heavy the left knee, lengthen the left waist. One more moment. And back to neutral. Catch your block on its flat side between your two knees. Squeeze the heck out of it and lift it up with the inner thigh. Like tractor beam it up. You can do that so much that pulls you up onto your toes. Hopefully it doesn't throw you forward like it did me. Or simply hold and squeeze and lift in a static way. And releasing, step or hop, feet wide apart. 10 toes, turn out. Sit down low into the hips. Catch opposite hand, opposite shoulder. Keep torso facing straight out in front of you and flirt with the idea of left side waist to thigh, left shoulder to left knee, drop the tail down and let it reorganize the spine to vertical and then head leads as you go over to the right, ribs to thigh, shoulder to knee, tail leads as it pulls you up. So head leads up and over to the left like a fountain. And then tail brings you up like an anchor. Switching the other arm to be on top. And back to center, straighten your legs, 10 toes straight ahead, pause, hands on hips, turn those left toes more to your right toes, and let the left knee bend and wrap the left hip also towards your right toes, then lift the right toes and turn them to the right, you have a new facing to the right, heels in the line in theory, left hip towards right foot. We made this shape a while ago. <clears throat> From here, simply balance the weight, right foot sort of pushing you back into your left, left foot sort of pushing you forward into your right, and your torso quite clearly vertical. Some depth, some gathering and deepening of a presence in the low belly if you can. Your blocks are hopefully near if you need them. Come on down. But if you interlace your hands in front of your low belly and sort of hoist that belly up, can you feel the two pelvic halves trying to negotiate a sense of levelness? Right, it's easy to leave the left pelvic half behind for some of us, don't do that. And for others of us, fewer of us, it's easier to let the left hip Get ahead of the right hip. Can you do neither of those? And keep them pretty much side by side. Catch the floor or your blocks. Parjvottanasana. Folding sweetly, lovingly, any amount over your right thigh. Still with that idea of the pelvic halves sustaining some even weight, some even investment in going forward. I'm gonna back my pose up some so you have a better visual as we move on from here. With hands down on floor blocks, bend the right knee so the shin's vertical, and then bring the left leg to neutral so the heel is up. Notice belly and thigh are touching. Keep belly and thigh touching, but can you put all your weight in your right foot? So now the right leg is like it usually is in chair pose with the knee quite bent. 
quite bent, right knee. Take your left leg as high as you can without any right leg straightening. Just lift that left leg, lift that left leg, lift that left leg. And then cat pose your spine as you come rolling up. Drop that left toe behind you. Find a lunge. Torso up, heart up, arms up, and then hands to prayer as you swing left heel under you. Back to the horse stance. Low in the hips, wide in the knees. Ninja stance, right? Horse stance. People call it goddess stance. I don't know why I, I'm resistant to that. Straighten your legs. Right toes turn towards left. Right hip turns towards left. Left toes are now your new north star. Right hip turn towards your left toes. Interlace hands right in front of low belly and find this even left foot pushing you back, right foot pushing you forward, scissoring those inner thighs, pulling up from inner arches to inner ankles, to inner thighs, to pelvic floor, to the front of your spine. And as you come forward, bring right hip with you in line with left. Don't let it go forward of the left hip, which is harder. Fewer people do that. Most people leave it behind. Hopefully you brought your blocks with you if you need them. Keep scissoring the inner thighs. And if your back body, if the shoulders, back ribs, kidneys, if those feel like, if the back flesh feels like it's crashing forward faster, then put a little reach through the front ribs, maybe a little reach through the bridge of your nose. Can you lengthen some in the front of you? So there's more length in the abdomen and less just collapsing forward. <clears throat> Bend into left knee, I'm gonna back up again. Bend into left knee and neutralize the right leg. So lunge right leg. Belly and left thigh stay glued together, bring the weight forward and take the right thigh up. Don't straighten your left leg at all. And I know that you all probably likely either one or two are dead. <laughs> Don't do it. Left leg quite bent. Open the back of the right knee. Take the right leg higher. Feel that hamstring action. Really lift and float the right thigh up. And then as you land it, cat pose your spine. Roll the torso up as you land in a lunge. Reach up. Party, party, party. And then little left knee straightening to swing the right heel under. Sit back down in your horse stance. Ten toes straight ahead and step or hop your feet right together. Can you go lay down, Brown? Go lay down. <clears throat> so while you're recovering, I'll try to direct this down dog. Go lay down. You got a butt side? Something other than this. We're going to start the same way, same beginning, different ending, lay down. So from legs right together, step or hop your feet wide apart. <clears throat> A little bit of knee straightening to turn left toes to the right, left hip to the right, right toes to the right. I'm going to back up again. This time, simply the lunge, left heels lifted, arms go up, interlace the fingers, release the index finger, and then bring the arms straight in front of you, pointing at something straight in front of you. Lean the torso forward, so it's warrior three, all right? Lean the torso forward, all the way in the right leg. Don't be in a hurry to straighten the right leg. Left leg lifts. Any amount you want to straighten the right leg, aim that right sit bone down, lift the belly up. Stretch from end to end. For three, two, maybe longer. Rebend right knee, find the lunge, torso up, arms up. 
maybe gaze up, yee-haw, and then back to the horse stance. And I'm gonna shimmy to the side. <laughs> and then any amount of leg straightening to help you get the right toes around, right hip around, left toes straight ahead, ball mound right foot, simple lunge, arms up. Different pinky in front, different thumb on top, interlace. Then take aim at your higher self here, fingers straight ahead, all the way to the left foot. Right leg lifts by hamstring strength, and then how much you straighten the left leg is up to you, but root that left sit bone down. Lift the low belly a lot for a few more seconds. Back we go. Lunge, horse stance, and then step or hop, legs right together. One more standing pose, and then we're done. We're going to the floor at that point. <laughs> we're done with standing poses. You might be done. Step or hop, feet wide apart, horse stance. <clears throat> So triangle pose, <clears throat> where did a hands-free side angle, triangle into half moon. So keep torso facing, current facing, simply kick left heel out, turn left leg in a bit, right legs turned out fully, and go ahead and straighten both legs at the same time as you tip torso sideways. Maybe come back, undo that, check it out. Can you simultaneously straighten the legs and tip and have everything sort of meet at the same time? So the moment my legs are straight, it's the same moment my torso lands in the pure side bend and I can catch right ankle to right hand. <clears throat> the sit bone is chasing that right toe, right sit bone chasing right toe. Couple more organizing breaths here to get right sit bone under you, to feel the hug and squeeze of the left inner leg. And to go into half moon here, I'm gonna scooch to the left so you have a better visual. Similar idea, if you bend the right knee and pull the pelvis towards the right foot, Put all the weight in the right foot, but keep the left toe sort of touching the floor, right leg bent. Right leg stays bent, and you can float the left leg to the horizon. Keep right knee aligned with right toes, and if you can, you straighten that leg. Right, a few of you have the chops to do the left thigh stretch. So if you point your left toes and bend the left knee, can you try to bring your left heel to your own ass? And then maybe it's in reach. I'm a big fan of bringing the legs into their own positions by their own strength. Keep left foot and left hand if you've got it. If not, don't worry. Bend right knee a little or a lot. Turning open, turning open. Extend left leg. Touch floor with left foot. Triangle pose. Hiya. And then torso up. Goddess stance. I'm going to scooch to the right so there's more room for you to see. Turn right leg in, turn left leg out. Both knees are soft. Timing, do it a few times. Leg straightening as you point tail to the right and head to the left. And then rebending for a vertical spine a couple, three times. So the two pelvic halves are sort of rotating to the left but you're turning your torso to the right. Can you feel that as you go in? And then left hand holds left ankle for basic support, like a prop to extend spine, head, right through space like a vector. Tail a little bit scooped towards the front, towards the direction your navel is pointing. 
left sit bones scooping under towards left big toe. And as you bend into your left knee, it's like let the left foot pull the floorboards under you. Really, it's pulling the pelvis. Left hand touches floor block, all the weight in the left leg. Keep the left knee bent. Do not be in a big hurry to straighten it, but lift the right leg first. Get that like on the horizon. And then any amount you want to straighten your left leg. Really stand on that outer left foot without losing your left big toe. Feel a lot of deep belly gathering and maybe for the right thigh lengthener. If you point the right toes first and then bend in the right knee and think of sliding the back of the leg muscle short and you catch, you bring your foot to your hand in theory. Hang on if you got it. If you don't, don't worry about it. If you have the foot, bend your left knee. Keep turning navel towards sky. Eventually letting go of the right foot landing the right toes, triangle pose, back to horse stance. <laughs> Stay with bent knees and turn the toes straight ahead. And then stay with bent knees, kick the heels under, toes straight ahead, bent knees, heels under, toes straight ahead, heels under, tick tock, heel toe legs right together. Bend down, hands down, down dog. Oh my God, the first damn dog, I mean down dog of the class. Both dogs if you want it. A dog's gonna feel good. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to grab my mat. On your back with knees bent. And this is a point where you could be done. You could land in Shavasana, rest, and, and namaste. Bye-bye. <clears throat> Otherwise, softer now. Uh, both feet on floor, you can do whatever you want with your arms. Um, back to that idea of looking at the sole of the foot. So picking up the right foot and trying to shine the sole of the right foot towards your face. Use that to put that ankle, right ankle on left knee, like figure four. And then waggle your left foot so it's more in line with your tail, right? So if left foot was to the left of the hips or in line with sit bone, whatever the case, have it right in the midline. You might pick your head up to look. <clears throat> and further supinate your right foot. So trying to turn the right foot towards your face and send the right knee away from you. And then reverse that. If you start to swing that right big toe around and pronate the foot, let it swing the knee towards you and then actually slide that outer shin calf down towards the left, towards eagle leg. <clears throat> if you've got it in your movement vocabulary in your bones, can you hook left ankle over right? So it's truly eagle legs. I placed left foot on floor. I had to pick my left foot up to do that. And my feet are further from me now. Just left foot's on the floor. <clears throat> eagle arms. So the left elbow is closest to your face. If you stack left elbow on right elbow, cross at the wrists, then bring your palms together. And touch the fingertips overhead. So your arms are like smashed into your face. And can you press your lumbar flat to the floor? That's hard. Keep lumbar flat to floor. Exhale, touch elbows and knees together. One, let's do 10. Keep lumbar flat on the floor. Touch fingers and toes. Two, lumbar stays down. Fingers and toes touch, then come up three. Five, halfway there, six, seven, eight, 
nine, and 10. Land left foot, unfurl arms, swing the right knee back open, supinate the right foot back to the figure four. And then keeping right knee pressing away from you, swing your left knee to the left. Good luck pushing right knee away from you. And then swing left knee up through center and over to the right. The right knee sort of um, bands on the floor. So when the knees are to the right, your legs are adducting. And you swing the left knee up and to the left, the legs abduct. They come apart, knees go away from the midline. Then you swing it up and to the right, come towards the midline. And the next time you swing knees up, baby ball on your back, curl those toes in and pull your toe knuckles towards your face. Fully flexed foot and dorsiflexion of the ankle. And then plop feet down, arms wide. Like you're trying to see what you stepped in with your left foot, swing that left foot up, place that ankle, left ankle on right thigh and waddle right foot to be in line with your tail. Emphasize supinated left foot and emphasize external rotation. Try to press that left knee away, 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 away. And then as you swing the left foot from a supinated foot to a pronated foot, feel it swing the knee to the midline and then scissor slice, slide outer left calf along the outer right calf. And if you can hook left ankle under right, go for that right foot on floor. Right elbow on top of left elbow, eagle arms. Lumbar spine to the floor and touch the right fingertips to the floor overhead. Your arms are in your face. Breathe in and then exhale. Touch elbows and knees. One, ten of them. Unfurl arms, untangle legs back to a supinated left foot, figure four, left ankle on right knee. And then keep the supinated foot, swing the knees to the right, reach that left knee away, away, away. The knees turn away from each other. And then as you swing the right knee up, right foot still on the floor. And he's over to the left and the knees sort of swing towards the midline past each other hug in the middle and when you swing the right knee to the right they go away from the midline pressing to the sides two more times so we could pronate the feet when the knees are to the left and supinating the feet as they swing over to the right. And one more. And then baby ball on your back. And both feet on the floor, cross your arms over your body Waggle your feet wide and let the two knees knock together here. Simply pause for a moment. In this pause, allow the breath to go wherever it wants. Let it move however it wants. Don't hold it back. If you feel winded or if the heart's going fast, let the breath be free. top of the inhale, 
So if the breath is still leveling out and you're catching up, just stay with that. Don't do anything else. Just let your breath level out. If it feels easy, if it feels free and um, unhurried, then at the top, hold the breath in. And with your belly muscles, can you push the energy of the fullness of the inhale down? Can you push that upward rising, expansive energy of the inhale down into the belly, into the pelvis? And then of course, when the need arises, release it, let it go. And if you need to breathe in again, do that, right? Otherwise, hold the breath out. Hold the breath out. And then I invite you to pull that energy up. If you could figure that out. We're not going to break it down today, maybe someday soon. And then when the urge arises to inhale, do that. And let's simply work with this just here now. So arms and legs are hooked up onto the midline. You're sort of gathered in. Big, long inhales and holding at the top, pushing the breath down. And you hold it till the urge to exhale is strong but not stressful. And if it's controlled and easy, then maybe, maybe you can hold the breath out right then and there. You might not. Like, don't be too pushy with your breath. I'm going to do a round or two. You can either rest or stay engaged with it. Or you could watch. When you're ready, stretch long, arms overhead, legs long below. Catch your belt. <laughs> Mine's far away. And if you have a 10 foot or an eight foot belt, longer belt's better. Right, if you've had to buy home props in this quarantine shelter in place business, or if you haven't yet, please, when you do, 10 foot belt, 10 foot belt, there's no substitute. So if you have a short belt, you're just gonna have to hold on to the ends of it. If you have a long belt, you can put the belt in a loop and loop um, uh, the belt over the foot and then you have a couple choices. I like it behind my neck because I like my neck curve supported and it gives me something I can interact with in terms of neck curve support and how I position my head. <clears throat> if that doesn't appeal to you, put it behind your head. So I've shown that here. If you've got really fine, slippery, fairy hair like me, that can be a challenge unless your hair is dirty. That helps, <laughs> which tells you the state that my hair is in. Um, <clears throat> or you could put it behind like your left shoulder, that loop. I'm gonna go behind my neck. Left leg is long. And let's just pause here with this, in theory, hands-free, Supta Padangustasana one. And while you're here, Feel where your whole back body, whatever parts of your back body meet the floor. So I can feel the back of my head, the back of my arms, my shoulders, my thoracic spine and ribs. 
most of my pelvis. And I'm relaxed with my left leg, so it's like outer back left leg. There's a little fire, a little yang in the right leg. Everything else is soft. And I want to put my inhale back, back into the back of my arms, back into the back of my ribs, back of my pelvis. So I'm just gonna inhale backwards, not literally, right? But inhale the breath into my back body. And exhaling in the same direction, like water seeping through soil into the earth. So like I'm pulling the heavenly chi or the sky chi down through my nostrils pouring it into the back body the way rain might collect in a valley or a pond. And then how that eventually gets absorbed into the earth. So breath like the spring rains here, saturating the deepest levels of what's touching the earth here, your back body, and then seeping earthward. Your right thigh might get a little fatigued. Don't worry about that. When you're ready, disturb nothing. Keep the breath going. If you can, simply pick the left foot up, put it in the loop. If you have to change the belt, use your hands to do that and then slowly landing with the left leg up and the right leg long. Now, the second side has its own karma to deal with, plus the fact that it's second, right? So I take my time here to straighten the new down leg, the right leg. I take my time because it has to sort of unfold from its previous position and then offer whatever length it has for this new position. So I'm taking my sweet time. And then continue, please, to breathe like you're absorbing the spring rains. So pulling the sky chi in from above. Let it pour down and gather in the back of you where the kidneys live, where most of your lungs are, where the brain stem lives, where the pulmonary veins and arteries live, where the hamstrings live. And then with the exhales, let it continue to seep downward the way the April showers can bring May flowers. And if you haven't already, I invite you here to linger at the bottom of the exhale. And in that bottom of the exhale lingering, can you find the right psoas? So I didn't mention in terms of structures that live in the back body, the psoas is. So put the bottom, the end of the exhale into the right psoas and invite it to soften and lengthen. Sorry, I didn't offer that to the left. In theory, it got it. Another couple of breaths here with the left leg up. Okay, you could also be done here. You could put your left foot down, maybe do something in the middle and rest. Otherwise, I'm gonna offer one more thing, two more things. So we're gonna get up, grab our chairs, grab our chairs. I'm folding my mat into thirds, just so it's a little bit easier. chair on the mat, 
Oh no, wait, that's not what I want to do. Sorry. Chair can slide, I don't care. But I don't want my bolster to slide. So I'm gonna fold up my mat into fourths and put the bolster on the chair. So if you're using an ottoman or another kind of chair, if it's if you're not gonna slide around, then you don't need the mat. You could put some pillows or a big pile of blankets. I just want a soft, curved surface. Starting on the right side. So I've got left foot stepped in front of the chair and I'm kicking my right leg back behind me so I can lay right ribs, right ribs, right rib cage on the chair. And then left foot can stay sort of in front of the chair or you can stack your left leg above your right. Right hand can support the head if there's a place to brace the elbow on the chair. And in theory, left hand can grab the back of the chair to support you. Pure side lying and or flirting with a little bit of spirally twist. So I like to wrap left side arm and back and ribs a little bit forward. Not so I tip forward, but just to free up side back. And as I wrap left side forward, I can actually swing left leg back a little bit. I teach this a lot, pure side lying on the floor. But now we're pure side lying over a support and then we're adding this spiral. And the opposite could be true. Swing left leg a little bit forward and sweep left ribs a little bit back. So now you're twisting a little bit open. You can stay here. For as long as you like in any of these variables little pure uh, a pure side line with no twisting or adding these little spiralic maneuvers uh, I'm gonna climb higher over the chair so now it's not so much the ribs as it is bottom ribs side waist and hips so now I've got more of my upper body over the chair uh, I can still keep my right foot on the floor next to me, but the left leg is sort of hanging in space. And if that does not work for you, then uh, bend that knee and hang it, set it, tuck it into the right leg. And you can certainly go back and forth between not supported with a straight, dangling, reaching leg and bending that knee for somewhat support. So we're inviting the side body lengthener to move down from the ribs to the waist, to the hip, to the IT band, to the outer ankle. And again here, any bit of rotation or twist. I have now extended my right leg so it's hovering under left leg, active in the inner legs, squeezing them towards each other, and letting the top leg, the left leg, win a little. And then I'm gonna go over a little bit more, up and over a little bit more. So now it's primarily the pelvis. Primarily, the pelvis is on the bolster, some side waist, and then right leg in front of the left shin. So I'm gonna hook right shin in front of left shin. And then outer feet hook together. Right shin is in front. My whole right forearm is on the floor. And I can steer it with that right forearm. I can push more weight towards the feet. Really delicious feedback for me in the side hip where it meets the side waist, which is most of my drama. My soma drama. Somatic, dramatic. 
and just play. So like now I've tucked right arm under, I've caught the opposite leg of the chair, left arm long, yeah, yum. Just breathing as full as I can. Trying to touch with my breath where I got most the sensation, which is pulled quite taut. So I'm trying to interact with it. You don't, you don't, I don't recommend going to your deepest stretch and hanging out there. Move slowly towards the lengthening sensation. Don't make it a big ass stretch. It's not awesome for your nervous system, quite honestly. Okay. To undo, unhook the ankles, hands under your head and shoulders to tip the weight towards the feet. And then simply pour onto your belly and step your left foot a little forward to get your foot on the floor, feet right together. Come rolling on up. <laughs> Let's do the other side. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so first the ribs. So right foot in front of the chair. I'm on the other. I just do see do do see do with your chair, right? And then catch the left side ribs. And check it out, right? Do you want to keep your right foot where it is? Outer left foot stays on floor. Can support head on hand. Maybe 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 maybe. Right hand can catch the chair back behind you. I'm stable here, so I'm gonna stack my legs. And they do stack for me here. And then adding the little sweeping spiral where from my tail, from my sacrum in the back, wrapping back, right side, around to the front, and then swinging the right leg back, just some, just a bit to get the hook up, the tug, the tension, cross the back spiral. And then as I swing leg forward and chest open, heart up, arm back, get the front spiral through the front body. Hmm. <clears throat> so I will be for the next weeks and the last week or so continuing to work with legs side body in the interest of spring using the lens of Ayurveda and Oriental medicine to hone in on the parts of the body associated with this energetic of growth. New heat, but not too much heat. I'm sliding out now. So uh, bolster, catching pelvis, waist, and ribs. Pelvis, waist, and ribs. My left foot can still be on the floor. My right leg is clearly dangling. <clears throat> and then again here, whatever playing. So something else about the side body, it's where your front and your back meet. Front and back body meet at the sides. And depending on how you live your life, what you do for a living, what you do for hobby, what you do for habit, what you do for sport, it can distort the side seam and pulls more back flesh forward or pulls more flesh in the front body back. And so how you relate here to your pure side seam and whether you twist forward or back is ideally based on what you're feeling, following the tension, not just doing what I do because I said to do it. I'm going one more time up and over. So it's pretty much the pelvis on the chair, pretty much just the pelvis, hooking bottom leg shin in front of top leg shin. So that's the left shin. Hook it in front of the right and catch those outer feet. Final place here. Ideally, most of the work is concentrated. Most of the sensation is concentrated outer hip, outer thigh. So we've worked our way from the ribs to the waist to the hip at the, as the apex of this shape. And try to touch the place with the most tension with your breath.
Okay, yeah. <laughs> I can I can spend some time there. I'm climbing out. Come on out the same way. Take your time. <clears throat> Couple of options here. You could lay back down on the floor, do a bridge pose or legs up the wall. Something in the middle, something symmetrical, and then rest. I'm going to use the chair for a supported back bend. So, if you don't have a yoga chair, I don't know what to tell you. I'll go to the floor and do bridge pose. Bridge pose, maybe legs up the wall. If you have a chair, keep the mat on it, yoga chair. Put a blanket over it. And then if you can slip your legs through the chair back, then you're ready to go. Sliding your hips all the way to the back edge, catching pelvis. Depending on how tall you are, ideally you can catch your shoulder blades. So I'm going to use my weight of the body on the chair to let it pull the back body flesh towards my feet as I push, push with my hands on the chair back to slide over. And you can certainly support your head with hands interlaced behind your head and hug the elbows close to your head. Reach the elbows to the floor as you back bend through the chair. If you don't need neck support, hands can be overhead or opposite elbows held in your hands, arms overhead. Stay either in your bridge pose, supported bridge pose, supported back bend in this way, or legs up the wall, whatever you got going on for as long as you like. And ideally you're comfortable. The shape that you're in is comfortable and not so intense that you have no bandwidth. You just have to sort of hold on tight. Can you relax where you're at? Can you allow the feeling of the shape you're in to be in the fore, in the foreground, but not so consuming that you lose the background? And background being breath, background being presence, background being stability, going further, further, into this idea of unwavering presence, timeless, boundless expanse. And allow yourself to be wherever you are. Those of you who have backbended through the chair, ideally you just reverse the steps. Squiggle your way towards your feet and use your hands on the chair to come up. Or you could slither out the back end of the chair. So you're either resting or in a position in which you can rest. So if you're in a position in which you cannot rest, go there now. And staying with that sort of split screen of foreground and background. The foreground being your presence, the shape you're in. And the background being the context bigger context of breath and presence and household energy and other beings in vicinity and the context of the planet of the times and feel that simultaneous presence of infinite and finite
of uniquely, specifically you and infinitely indefinite energy and expanse. And if you can find the place, it's a little blurry, but if you can find the place where you meet, where the energy that you are, that you can identify as your small self meets the energy that surrounds and supports you, go right there. Right there is where the details are. Lots of information coming in at the perceived boundary of you and infinity. And as much as you can blur that, keep blurring it and let yourself expand. And relax. And stay there as long as you like. Thank you for watching. I love you.